going to be reading from the book of Exodus, 14th chapter. I'm going to be reading verses 13 through 22 for you hearing this morning. Pray God's blessing on the message. Ask Him for a spiritual energy this morning to deliver what He has blessed us to deliver. To all the fathers in the house, I want to say Happy Father's Day. To all the mothers who had to be fathers, happy Father's Day. Amen. Exodus 14, chapter 13 through 22. You have to say amen. amen. The Word of God declares these words in this chapter, this book. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left hand. Church, amen. amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow. Hit, hit it home. Amen. And so we're going to look at uh, verse number 21 as our focus verse, and then we're going to, to get out of the way. I'm, I'm excited. My God. That, 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 that's right. That's right. Wow. So verse number 21, here's what it says. It says, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. So I want to talk with you just for a few minutes. The Lord will make a way for you. The Lord will make a way for you. I know that there are some familiar passages of scripture that we love to hear. We are prone and trained to only focus on certain scriptures at times in our lives. But this particular text was relevant for me today and relevant for anyone who is really trying their best to do their best. Amen. Amen. Trying their best to try to rise above whatever they've been involved in and try to find a way of escape. And we know that the word teaches us that with every temptation, God provides a way of escape for us. That means that none of us have to be tempted. And if we are tempted, we don't have to stay in our temptation. And, and because we have those outlets, brothers and sisters, we ought to learn where the exit signs are. You know, and the first thing that they teach you when you enter a venue or a building as a safety precaution is they tell you where the exit signs are. So in case of an emergency, they want you to know the route or the ways to get out of the building. Especially if there's danger in the building and if your life is in danger, you got to know how to get out of the place you're in. So it is with God. When God carries us through 
through a situation and when we're in certain circumstances, you've got to walk into that circumstance and that situation looking for the exit signs. God has already provided them. God has already mapped it out. God has already uh, lit it up for you. When, when, when I'm on a plane, every time I fly, it's amazing that the presentation before we lift off is the same. They want to show you all of the ways to stay safe. They tell you about if the cabin pressure drops, here's the way you stay to keep breathing. If the little thing drops out of the ceiling and, and you put it over your mouth and that's how you breathe. In case that we drop too low and we're about to crash, they have exit doors and those exit doors are designed to pop off and you can jump out at any time. So if you're sitting in the exit row, they ask you, are you prepared to do the work necessary to make this a safe place for people to go? I want to share that with you this morning because this this to a point in our lives where many of us have to be prepared to lead people to the exit. And it's not an easy task because a lot of times we're so afraid and we're so fearful and when we get to certain places and we're not familiar with what to do, we tend to lean on our own understanding. But not today. Not today. I don't want you to be held bound by that same mindset any longer. So we have this particular issue that is a familiar passage, but yet it is one that we don't talk about very often. It is the day that the Lord shows not only the people of Israel, but the people of Egypt that he is God. There were several points in our text today where God even acknowledges that he is about to do a great thing. And to do why? To do it because he wants the people of Israel to know that he's God, but he also wants the people of Egypt to know that he is God. And so he now takes control of the situation. Tell your neighbor, God is in control. And a lot of times we don't believe that because the situation doesn't appear that God is in control. But I want to drop this in your spirit today. No matter where you are, no matter who you are, no matter what you're going through right now, God is in control. He may not be in front right now, but I want you to know he's there. And because he's there, he's speaking. And when he speaks, the question is, can you hear him? A lot of times we don't even hear God because God is not registering or he's not on our radar. Because he's not on our radar, we're not tuned in to what God is saying. You all have radios in your cars, and for those that have radios that work, you have to turn the radio on for something to come out of it. Is that right? And for those of us that have a favorite radio station, don't think that the radio station starts playing when you turn your radio on. It's still playing. You're just not tuned in. But the minute you tune in, you get connected because no matter what song is on, you start moving to the beat. It may not even be a song that you know or even like, but because it's your radio and you're listening, you're moving to the beat. I want you to learn how to do that in the spirit realm. I want you to learn how to turn on your spiritual radio and tune in to whatever God is saying. And as soon as you get connected, as soon as you hear the sound come through, I want you to get into the groove of whatever is going on because there is something that you need to know about how to get out of your situation. Look at the first part of the text. The first part of the text is that Moses is now trying to come and comfort the people. But he cannot comfort the people because the comfort that they need can only come from God. Let me help you understand. There are days and times when there's nothing anybody can say that can help you. There's times when you're going through in your life and it's so overwhelming, the pressure is so bearing so hard on your shoulders that it's nothing you can do or say that can lift the burden. Those are the days, brothers and sisters, where you need to go to a higher power. Those are the days where you need to go on your knees and lay before God and you need to talk to God about your situation. When you get to a point where your situation is too much for you to bear, let this be the record for you today. It's time to take it to God in prayer. I wish you could take it before then, but I know that there are some of us like me who wait until the last minute who may, when it's unbearable, when I don't know what to do, when I don't know which way to turn, when I've done all I can do, i tried all I can try, I've said all I can say, and I've had my wits in. Now I say, Lord, help me. But I could have avoided all of that if I had just gone to God in prayer prior to, because i got to realize that no matter what happens in my life, I will always have trials and tribulations. I will always have hard days. I will always have something going on in my life. I will always have a struggle. There will never be a day in my life that there's not a struggle going on. It may be a struggle between my flesh and my spirit. It may be a struggle with me trying to do the right thing. It may be a struggle with me trying to handle certain situations or how to deal with you one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes that's a struggle. Amen. Some days I want to keep my peace. Some days I want to hit the peace. Amen. So, so you, you've got to know when to bring God into the situation. And so the children of Israel, the story goes on that they now 
been released from Egypt, they've been released from bondage, and they are now on their way. And as a result, we know that Egypt was a place of bondage for them. Egypt represents what we see today as addictions, places where we are now held bound against our will, places where we can no longer strive to be all that we can be, places and things and people in our lives that have held us captive for so long that we get to a point where we no longer want to leave. Have you ever been in a situation so long that you just stop looking for a way out? Oh my God. We stop looking for an exit sign. There are times when people have been in situations so long, they've been bound so long, that they no longer have hope that there is a way out or that there's an opportunity for them to live a better life. We live in a time now where people have lost hope with the economy. People have lost hope with society. People have lost hope with health care. And they've been trying everything that they can to restore hope to people by offering systems and these new programs, but systems and programs don't restore hope. God is the only one that restores hope. If you're going to really see health care at its best, then you need to go to the God of healing. You need to go to Jehovah. You, you don't need to just pick up insurance. You need to pick up some assurance. You understand what I'm saying? If, if I lead to all of the worldly things and all of the systems of the world, then the world is going to always be in trouble. I've got to learn how to lean on God. situation. Know this, God always has a plan. Take a neighbor, God has a plan. So the children of Israel are now leaving Egypt. They're on their way to wherever God is leading them. And they turn around and they see their enemies chasing them. Uh, I thought this was very important for us to understand because a lot of times we don't recognize that our enemies or the thing that has kept us bound for so long has already told us that you'll never leave. And so when you finally get a break and get out, it's always chasing you. Your past is always chasing you. I want you to know that when your past starts chasing you, believe it or not, you get so overcome, you come, sometimes you get so overwhelmed with fear that you forget that God is in control. Amen. And you get so more concerned about your past than you do your God. And so these people are no different. When they looked up, they had been enslaved for 430 years. They had been bound. They had been uh, 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 enslaved in Egypt. They had worked for their masters. And then all of a sudden, God shows up through Moses and says, we're going to go out of here. We're about to leave. Leave everything. Bring just a few things. We're on our way out. And a lot of times, when, when God comes, he comes quickly. And he doesn't give us time to pack the things that we think we need. Amen. You know, you've got to have your favorite slippers and you've got to have your favorite dress. And please don't forget your rollers and your makeup can be left in the back. Amen. So you've got to get all of the necessities. And you try to bring those things because you don't know where you're going and you don't know who you're going to run into. But in the wilderness, you want to understand that when God brings you out of a situation, wherever he takes you to, God's got your back. Tell your neighbor, God's got your back. So when Egypt is, is no longer their home and they're leaving the place of familiarity and they're going to a place of unfamiliarity, they become afraid, not just of the people, they become afraid because they don't know where they're going. A lot of times, we don't take the exercise because we don't know where it leads to. A lot of times, when we don't know where it leads to, we would rather stay where we are, where we're familiar, than go somewhere where we don't know. A lot of times, our minds can't even click to the fact that I'm on the seventh floor, and if I go out this exit, go surely that's a way for me to get down. But because of fear, I won't even go through the exit door. I would just rather go down the stairs inside the burning building than try to get out. And I've learned in my life, that when God shows me an exit sign, the best thing I can do is just trust him and believe that there's help on the other side. So Egypt, is, they've left Egypt. The Egyptians are chasing them. And now they come to a crossroad. Tell your neighbor, there will be crossroads. They have the Red Sea in front of them. And they have the Egyptians behind them. They have uh, uh, what they seem to be a way uh, that they can't get over. And they don't know that they can go back. So now they're in between not having a way going forward and not having a way to go back. They're stuck in the middle. And I found out that it's in the middle where we lose or gain. It's in the middle where we make our best decisions. Even so, it's in the middle where we make our worst decisions. Because you have to listen to the conversation of the text. The text is really uh, confusing to most because when they get to a place or a point that they don't know which way to go, I heard one of them speak up and say, you should have left us in Egypt. A lot of times when we get under pressure, we want to go back to what's familiar rather than what's God's plan for our lives. Because God's plan for our lives may not include the bondage that we've been in. However, I've learned something too that when we're in a situation too long, we forget that God even exists. We forget that God is in control. We stop looking to God after a while. If the lights stay out too long, you stop trying to get a 
never stop praying. You should never stop pressing. You should never stop trying to move forward because God will make a way for you. However, if God is going to make a way for you, you got to do your part because God is standing on ready to do his part. And when God gets ready to do his part, it's activated by you doing your part. And a lot of times, brothers and sisters, we think it's the devil that's holding us back. Really, it's us that's holding us back. God is ready. God has already provided a way of escape. God has already established the exit door. However, we can't go through it because we're afraid or there's some fear that's hindering us from going through the ways that God has provided for us. God will make a way, but if you don't want to go that way, then you can't blame God. Ah, what are you talking about, Pastor? Here, here's what's going on. They, 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 they have come to a place of comfort. They have come to a place of, 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 of convenience, and, and they're complacent. And so the minute God moves them, and they no longer have the, the, the things that they've become accustomed to, they don't know how to live because the Egyptians have always provided for them. But here, today, in this situation, God is letting them know that the people that, that have provided for you under bondage, those people will no longer be your provider. He's saying, now, I'm going to step in, and not only will I deliver you and free you, to provide for you. I have a plan for your life. I have made provisions for you. I have a purpose for your life. But, but, but you wouldn't think that it would be a contentious situation because God has just, just shown that he's going to do these great things for them. But anytime you get so comfortable in who you are and what you've been doing and the life that you've been living and you forget about God, even when God shows up, you're rebellious and reluctant to go with God because God unfamiliar to you. A lot of us rather choose the devil over God because the devil has been better to us we think than God. Mm. And we think it's been the devil that's been blessing us. It's been the devil's hand that's been feeding us. That's why it's so hard for us to leave the world and come to God because we've spent more time in the world than we have in God. So when we get under pressure, we look for the things that are convenient, comfortable, and have put us into complacency. And those are the things of the world. We lean back to the things that we've learned as our help. Mm. So when I say the Lord will make a way, I don't know what that way is, but the one thing that I have to do is trust God. Tell your neighbor, trust God. No, tell your neighbor, trust God. Trust God. Yeah, you have to. You got to speak that thing. Watch this. I want you to understand that whatever has kept you bound or in bondage, when it's chasing you, be mindful that you are being chased by your past. Because once God brings you out of it, it is your past. It is no longer your day or your life. It is your past. And a lot of times the reason why we can't go forward is because our past is chasing us. Listen at the conversation between God and Moses. Both my God tells the people, go tell Moses, tell the people, fear not. Why? Because he wants them to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show to them today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, you shall see them no more. And God is saying, those people that have held your bondage, those people that have held you captive, he said, the enemy that has been over your life all these years, today is the day. Not only will I bring you out, but you will never see them again. That's, that's, that's God closing the door. So when God gets ready to open the door, God's got to close the door. God's got to close the door of your past because he knows that if he leaves the door of your past open, that's where you're going. He knows that if he leaves it open too long, when things get rough, when times get hard, he's saying, okay, if I don't close this,
Let me tell you this. There's nobody or nothing bigger than God. I believe that in your spirit. So, so, so what does he say to Moses? Tell the people, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I like this 14th verse. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Hold your peace here means that you ought not to try to defend yourself. You ought not try to explain why you left. You, if, if you left and, and they come after you, ought not to try to open the door and say, let me explain why I had to leave. It, it's not for you to explain. It's not for you to try to figure out. It's not for you to try to, to go ahead and tell somebody, here's why I'm doing this. It's really up to you to just keep your mouth closed and let God deal with it. When, when, when somebody's fighting for you, you make it worse when you try to get in the way. You ever had anybody fight for you and then, then, then they fight for you and then, and then you jump in the middle, talk about stop. <laughs> Not this group, not this group. Okay, the, for the people that used to fight for a living, for the people that had to defend themselves, there, there were times when people would come in and try to step in and defend you. But but while they're defending you, you side with the person that they're trying to protect you from. <laughs> okay. okay. You, you make it hard for people to defend you when you're protecting the one that has put you where you are. And if God is trying to free you from that person, the best thing for you to do is step out of the way and let God deal with that person. You Verse he says, lift up thy rod and stretch it 
Some of us have jumped back in the water trying to swim over it. Because we don't know no better. But I want you to know that's, that's, that mindset has got to be gone. God brings you out. God has the ability to keep you out. If you go back, it's not because of the enemy. It's because we're not growing in God. In order for you to be able to sustain yourself in the will of God, you've got to grow. You've got to grow in your faith. You have to grow in your knowledge of Him. You have to understand who God is in your life. We preach day in and day out about the power of God and the access that we have to His power. But none of that is even going to move you if you're not trying Him. Mm. It's amazing that a commercial can come on and say, try this new product, and we'll go out and get 10 barrels, Amen. 10 bottles out. <laughs> new exercise come out, and we'll go out and join the class. <laughs> but the very same God, Elohim, Jehovah Jireh, mm -hmm. who's been our provider from day one, Jehovah Nisi, yeah. who's been fighting our battles, Jehovah Shalom, has been our peace in the midst of the storm. Yes. The word of God in the psalm says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And we won't even pick up our Bibles to taste it. Time has come, brothers and sisters, where we have to feel, realize that the realities of God, the realities of God are real. You think you've seen a reality show? Open your Bible. The realities are that Satan is real. The reality is that the devil is trying to kill you. The Bible said, Jesus said, the thief cometh to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. So who are you going to try? Who are you going to trust? Who are you going to follow? I ain't never met many people that sat down with the deep talking about, hey, dog, hold up. Will you steal all my stuff? Let's have coffee. Because <laughs> you'll find out after the coffee is over, he still going to steal. You understand what I'm saying to you? That if a brother comes and he says, hey, brother, let's shoot this dice. Yeah. Invite you in to play the game. And then when you start winning, he pulls out a gun. And shoots you in the head. Not over hundreds of dollars. Over a few dollars because the thought of winning scares the enemy. That's why when you're in Christ, everything is about victory. You are more than a conqueror. You're already victorious. And that scares the enemy. And the minute you start believing that and walking in that, the enemy no longer has power over your life. He no longer has influence over your thinking. When you learn to be who God has already created you to be, victorious, you are a conqueror. You are mighty in God. You are not subject. You are not a slave. You are mighty in God. And the devil keeps you at bay because he never wants you to come into the knowledge of the truth about who you are. So the Lord will make a way. I want you to trust him. So when I look at this text and I realize, and I'm done, that God is in control, it's, it's encouraging for me. Because my past is always trying to chase me. And today I've asked God, help me understand why the door has not closed. You know what I found out? Mm. I put my foot in. Mm. I ain't ready for the door to close yet. Because sometimes the devil makes us think that knowing our past gives us inspiration to move forward. Mm. No. That's not true. The devil has used our past as a way to keep us linked. Mm. And every time I think about my past, I open the door. Every time I desire to go back 
to my past. I open the door. And so I need God to, to get rid of the door, close it, and then remove it. That's what he did with Israel. He opened the door for them to go through. Then he closed the door, and now they can't go back. Everything about the Exodus is about going forward. The only dismay is that they had to go longer because it took them too long to trust God. It took them 40 years to go about three miles. Mm. Because they didn't want to trust. How long have you been in the wilderness? How long have you been running from God? You, you're in places that God never meant for you to be. And bless the Lord, he's taking care of you there. But man, wouldn't it be nice to be in the place that he's already ordained for? It wasn't meant for them to take 40 years to get to the promised land. But because they were just unwilling, they fought God every step of the way. We're fighting God. Every time God says, stop doing that, we do more of it. Every time he says, leave, we go back. Every time he says, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. We say, nah, not today, dog. I'll get with you next week. We bear those burdens all week long that are designed to kill us. I'm going to make this plain and try not to be vulgar, but I'm going to make it plain for you. What happens when you just eat, eat, and eat and never go to the restaurant? That's your spiritual life. That's your spiritual life. God wants to relieve you of all of the disease, all of the garbage, all of the waste that is living inside of your spiritual man. And he wants to cut those things away, get them out of your life, cleanse you, and create a path that if it has to go through, it goes all the way through. For people who don't get rid of waste, the waste becomes toxic, Ultimately, they die. There's so many of us dying spiritually because of the waste in our lives. Everybody stand. So if nothing else, if you got nothing else out of the message, just remember this point. God wants you to be He's given you so that he can make a way for you. If you don't know what that is, ask God. He's put it in your hand. And in that day, it was a physical presence that the people could see. Now, he's put it in our hearts. It's the Holy Spirit. So we have all that we need to make it. We have the Holy Spirit. What a wonderful tool because the Holy Spirit knows all. Everything that we need, the Holy Spirit is able to speak it into our spirits. If we just turn it over to the Lord. It's easier said than done, but it's a reality. Struggling is a reality. Temptations are a reality. But if God says, I will help you through every temptation, I'll bring you through every struggle and take him at his word. Let's pray. God, thank you now for this opportunity to share. I ask for your forgiveness, God. And I ask for an opportunity to repent of my own sins. God, that I may not be an hindrance, but that I can move out of the way and allow you to be a help for me and my family. Pray for these your children that stand in this holy place. That we all are willing to acknowledge our wrong and to give way to the fact that we have been in error, but we're willing to change our ways, that our thoughts may be established. God, that we give you the opportunity to show us the way through, and then now humble ourselves and use the power that you give us to go through the open doors and then stand out of the way as you close those doors and need not be open. Habits, to people, to situations and circumstances. 
it's in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever it is, whatever God puts on your heart, I want you to give something to show God that you are grateful. 